Hello and welcome to another TLC Tutoring Company Accounting Lesson. In this video, we will be going over step four, how to journalize adjusting entries. So for this company, we have five adjusting entries that we have to journalize at the end of the month. Now keep in mind, in addition to this data, we may also have to use the information on the unadjusted trial balance tab. So our first adjusting entry is telling us that one month of rent has expired. It doesn't tell us the amount of the rent expired, so that is going to be something that we calculate on our own. So let's take a look at the balance in unadjusted, uh, in our unadjusted trial balance, just to kind of get us started. It tells us that prepaid rent currently has a balance of $18,000. So at some point, we prepaid our rent in this amount. Now it's telling us that one month expired, so we need to know what the amount is uh, per month for this rent. So let's go back to our transactions and let's see if we can figure out what happened with this rent. Here on the second entry, it tells us that we paid $18,000 for three months of rent. Right? So that 18,000 that we saw in that account is for three months. So if we pull out our calculator, and we take that original 18,000 and we divide it by the number of months, we see that the rent per month is $6,000. So we have to record that $6,000 of that prepaid rent is no longer available to us. We used it up. So let's go ahead and start with there. So prepaid rent currently has a balance of $18,000. We have to take 6,000 away. All right, so prepaid rent is decreasing. Keep in mind that prepaid rent is an asset account. And then how do you decrease an asset account? Credit. Right. So let's start by putting our date. It's the last of the month. And we need to credit prepaid rent by that $6,000 that's expiring, right? That'll bring down the balance by that one month that was used up. Now the other side of this, keep in mind, when we use up the value of that prepaid rent, it then goes into rent expense. So uh, let's analyze it just for fun since we're practicing. Rent expense is an expense account and it's increasing, so therefore it is a debit. Okay. Moving on to our second adjusting entry. It tells us that supplies on hand at January 31st are $2,000. All right, so this is someone going to their supplies cabinet, counting everything up and saying there are $2,000 worth of supplies in this cabinet right now. So we, as the accountant, we say, okay, so I need to make the supplies balance $2,000. Um, let's see what the supplies balance is right now. So right now it says supplies is $3,000. We know that's not correct. So we need to take that 3,000 and turn it into 2,000. How do we do that? We're going to take away $1,000 of it. So how do we make 3,000, 2,000? Take away 1,000. So we know the amount of our entry. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in. Now let's play with the accounts. So supplies has to go from 3,000 to 2,000. So in this case, it is decreasing, it is going down. And what type of account supplies? It's an asset, so we decrease it by crediting the supplies account. So this credit to supplies will drag it down by 1,000, giving us a balance of 2,000. And then where are we going to debit to? Supplies expense, we used up all of those supplies. And remember, if you are provided with a chart of accounts, don't be afraid to go up and kind of look through it and see if any of them jog your memory. Moving on to our next one. We see that we have accrued some uh, administrative assistant salary. So most likely what happened here for this adjusting entry is our administrative assistant works for us and she gets paid on a regular, probably like weekly, bi-weekly um, kind of uh, schedule. So what's happening here is we have to show that $500 has accrued, but this amount hasn't fallen on a pay date. So we didn't actually pay him or her this $500. 
So uh, technically, it could have been just a couple days into the pay period, but it just wasn't enough to put us into an actual pay date. So 500 is our expense, and we owe our administrative assistant 500, but we haven't paid the cash yet. So let's go ahead and let's start with the expense portion. Um, our administrative assistant worked for us, so therefore our expenses are going up for $500. We reaped the benefits of having this administrative assistant work for us during those days. So what's happening is our salary expense here. Salary expense is going to be increasing. And salary expense is an expense account. No tricks there. And how do we make salary expense go up? Debit. So let's go ahead and debit salary expense by $500. The other side of this will be the fact that we owe our administrative assistant this money. We'll probably not pay it until the next pay date, unless something weird is going on with this company, but uh, it, we do actually owe our administrative assistant this money because it has accrued. So in this case, that will be salaries payable, a liability to show that the amount we owe our administrative assistant has gone up. So credit, salaries payable, by 500. Our next one is going to be to the depreciation of office equipment during the month. Now keep in mind, um, depreciation is a little bit of an interesting concept. If you haven't heard of it before, take some time looking it up in whatever textbook that your professor has assigned. But let's go ahead and analyze it real quick so we can understand what's going on. Uh, so back in the day, we would have purchased some equipment. When we purchased this equipment on January 4th, we went ahead and we put it in the equipment account, which is an asset. Now, as we use this equipment over time, what we do is we slowly expense the value of the equipment. Um, this is what we call depreciation. So in our case, we know that depreciation expense is going to be one of the accounts we use. So let's start with that so we have something on the board. So depreciation expense is an expense. It's going up, so we debit depreciation expense. I believe that was for 700. Yes, $700. All right, the other side of this, many students are tempted to then decrease the equipment account because we're writing off its value. However, we do not credit the equipment account when we are depreciating. Um, instead of doing anything to the equipment account, we actually are going to be increasing this special account here, the accumulated depreciation. Now, equipment is an asset. Accumulated depreciation is a contra asset. So what is happening here is we are increasing this contra asset account and if you maybe remember from your lectures or reading in the textbook, when accumulated depreciation goes up, this is going to kind of take away from its related asset, in this case, equipment. So equipment is actually going to uh, not be affected, but the accumulated depreciation, the overall effect is it takes away from the balance. One other thing to remember about accumulated depreciation, since it is a contra asset account, these signs flip. So a normal asset would increase with a debit, decrease with a credit. In this case, it is going to flip. So now a contra asset will increase with a credit and decrease with a debit. So in this case, when we want to add more to the accumulated depreciation account, we are going to credit it for the amount. And that's why here to make it go up, we are going to credit accumulated depreciation. And over the life of the equipment, we will continue to credit this month by month or quarter by quarter whenever we do these adjusting entries. And then over time un until the end of its useful life, we will continue to do that. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to our last adjusting entry. Our last one says that unearned fees on January 31st are $40,000. So they're telling us that the fees that we have not earned yet are currently 40,000, but when we take a look at our unearned fees account here, here they are, unearned revenue is what we call it. 
$50,000 is what is currently on the books. So our books currently say that we owe $50,000 worth of work, but we just went ahead and took a look at our records and it says, no, we only owe 40,000. So let's start with this concept. Unearned revenue has to go from 50,000 to 40,000. Now keep in mind what unearned revenue represents. Unearned revenue are amounts that we were paid cash for in advance and we owe the service, right? So we owe someone this service right here. So in this case, it is going to be decreasing from 50,000 to 40,000 because we provided $10,000 in services, right? So let's start with just decreasing the unearned revenue account. Unearned revenue is going from 50,000 to 40,000, so it's decreasing by $10,000. Uh, unearned revenue is a liability, so how do we make it go down? We debit. So let's start by debiting the unearned revenue account. The other side of this is going to involve why did it decrease? It decreased because we provided the work. And now try to remember, what do we get to record whenever we do our side of the deal? We get to record revenue. For this particular company, the revenue account is consulting revenue. So what we're doing is we are decreasing our unearned revenue by the amount that we earned and increasing consulting revenue by that amount that we earned. So a few things that you may have noticed in adjusting entries, a lot of the rules and a lot of the ways that we analyze these entries stay the same from what we were doing in our regular journal entries. The big difference is here, we're probably dealing with one or two new accounts. And also sometimes we're going to have to do a little math to figure out what the amount of the entry is, right? But keep practicing. The more you do it, the more you'll understand it. Okay. In our next video, we are going to move on to posting these five adjusting entries to a general ledger. I will see you there, and until then, happy studying.